This conference will now be recorded. Fine. So we'll do a very quick recap on what we saw the other day, more from a continuity, uh, and then we'll go. We'll, we'll um, start with uh, today's session. Um, so on Monday, uh, uh, I was explaining you more from an introduction. Um, the the uh, ba the basics of functional and non-functional testing what are the objective of each of these areas and what we do in each of these areas right and security testing falls under non-functional testing uh, is what um, uh, we were discussing right and then very specifically for each of these areas we looked into uh, what we do what we test what kind of problems we identify from a functionality perspective from a performance perspective and security perspective and then we went um, uh, one step ahead uh, more from a security perspective alone we deep dived uh, majority of you guys who have joined this session are might be from the functional background or from the other non-functional background so while you do this functional testing or when you traverse through uh, your application right what kind of problems you can uncover without even knowing a lot about security testing security concepts right uh, we went through a couple of examples the way the url can be manipulated um, how input validation is important uh, the error handling so a couple of examples we looked into it yesterday right um, and then with, with some live websites we went through these uh, examples um, and then uh, i also was talking about why uh, as a qa engineer it's important to be a full stack qa and how uh, the T-shaped skill set works, and what is the relevance of you to learn? Why should I learn this? Right, I am already an experienced uh, functional tester or a performance tester. Why should I learn security testing? Um, so that is something uh, we went through uh, the content, and then uh, then we we started with the security topic. Right, uh, I, I I was explaining you about multiple jargons multiple um uh, uh way they they call the security testing in different places depending upon how intensively we do what we do there are cyber security application security uh, assessment audits so and then i was going through a broader category of security uh, cyber security software security and application security and we as a QA community, testing community, right? Most of you are might be with a testing background or you might be very new to the uh, IT industry or a software uh, life cycle, right? So the cyber security and software security, as I was explaining, that's a very, very vast area. It involves networking, it involves uh, the OS level knowledge. So getting into that area is a, a totally a different skill set, totally a different uh, uh, area to uh, explore right what what we are going to invade is the application level security right uh, in an enterprise you might have multiple applications hosted in different servers working across different networks you will have different entry points firewalls a lot of components right so when you talk about application security it is about your application your application can be a .NET or a java or an angular react you you will have your own application server uh, MQs database. So this confined environment is what we call it as an application security or application uh, that is under our scope, right? So within that application security testing itself, there are again multiple uh, tenant when it comes to security testing. Uh, you do security testing at the code level, which is called SAST. You do at the more from open source libraries. Um, component level analysis, right? Uh, you call it as a software component analysis, more from a, um, uh, whether these versions are, what are versions you use? You use Mongo, Elastic, Oracle, even Java, all the all these softwares, open source softwares, open source libraries, what, it, it might have vulnerabilities, right? You just download and use it. Is it up to date? Are you using the latest version? So that analysis is also important because that is going to be part of your architecture. That is going to be part of your, um, application right you create your own own code that also has to be tested for uh, using sast you download your components uh, open source libraries that has to be 
tested that falls under your SCE and you have a black box more of a, a dynamic application testing you have an URL you test the endpoint you test that website more about a black box dust and we have a very um, recent uh, or I would say more trending way of testing it called uh, interactive testing uh, IAST right so all these things is what uh, uh, we discuss at eye level on Monday and then I was explaining you what is this uh, course about who are the target audience what is our objective and I went through the course content as well uh, on Monday right that's a very uh, quick recap on um, what we saw on Monday right so what we'll do is today is we'll get started with the key concepts right key concepts when I say key concepts of security testing um, see uh, I was again mentioning about application level security testing which means you have your application your website web application and it's going to get hosted and you're going to get an URL and an end user is going to open the browser and is going to launch the URL and is going to use it right so one one side you have people opening their browsers and launching the URL and using it and it the request flows through your um, internet it goes through your server and the response comes back that's the whole uh, environment in which this application security testing is going to be happening right so um, we will will probably look into a couple of important concepts uh, because whatever testing you're going to do whatever um, analysis you're going to do it is going to be something relevant to all these aspects what we are going to uh, uh, learn today right so this concepts are very basic con concepts uh, from a browser server communication um, and the way your requests are going to be sent to your server and then the way that it is going to come back to your browser so this is very important for you to understand because whatever tool you're going to use it whatever analysis you're going to use it it is all going to be around these areas okay um we'll we'll, we'll go through one by one as much as possible today if something is not possible we'll, it will be uh, taken care of the next session so we'll look into the tcp ip model HTTP and HTTPS, the HTTP methods, HTTP response code, HTTP request and response header and body, encoding and decoding as part of the cryptography, your cookies, session IDs, JSON web tokens. So it, it sequentially will go one by one uh, in detail. Uh, okay. Hi, Satish. Hi, Satish. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you in the middle. Uh, so as I said, like uh, this was the uh, discussions uh, which was happened on the Monday. So on Monday I had the demo session, which is uh, which is taken care from you. I was not at that session. So is this a uh, first? Uh, I mean, uh, topic which you are going to cover here, or else uh, uh, the demo session almost has been covered. Um, see, uh, though we call it as a demo session, uh, whatever it is, right? The we have started with the courses started. So Monday was our yeah. first session, and okay. whatever you learn, it's not more of a demo. No, nothing about demo, right? We call it as a demo session just because we can we can have all that uh, people attend and then understand. But this is this started. Uh, uh, this is a sequence of uh, um, uh, topics uh, which is going to uh, uh, go in up. Uh, certain order so it is not like randomly I'm just picking and uh, giving some demo no so it's a oh, okay. yeah it's a it's a first thing uh, it's a basic thing which we are getting started with the course uh, so don't even think that it is a demo yeah 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 fine that's what I heard. I mean you came into the middle of that uh, that list of uh, things right so I was asking about so from here we are going to start right yes 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 so if you look into our content as well um, so introduction to security testing is what we saw on uh, Monday right and the key concept is the first thing which is, which is getting started which is covered which I'm going to start now okay sure sure thank you okay no problem thanks thanks Atish. Yeah, no problem okay so um, yeah the first thing is your TCP 
IP model. Um, so assume that you have a laptop, right? And you have opened the Chrome and you're typing in say amazon.com. What you see, there's a request http www.amazon.com request goes and you get a response, right? As an end user, that, that, that is what you see, that is what you visualize it, right? But what exactly happens? What underneath in your laptop, uh, it, it is combination of your Chrome browser, that's the first level, and then it goes into your um, laptop's OS. There are so many things that will happen internally before actually the request goes out of your laptop, right? That is what we call it as a TCP IP model, right? There are four levels. Think that within your laptop, when you um, when you type in an URL and you submit it, that's the first level, right? You submit that HTTP or HTTPS request. That's the first level where it goes out of your Chrome browser. Okay? That's, that's an application layer. Don't think that application layer is something where application is uh, residing in server. No, just think that uh, visualize that within your laptop, you have a Chrome. And you're typing in an http.amazon.com when you submitted the request is goes through your application layer which is nothing but your browser here from there it will go to the next level called transport layer okay transport layer is where this uh this is a, this is a low level protocol they call it as a low level protocol http https all these things are all uh your uh, application level protocol or i level protocol this will get converted into a transport layer and then it will go through your uh, uh, IPv4, IPv6 internet layer. And then it will go through your actual uh, network components within your um, uh, OS, within your laptop. And then it goes out of your laptop. It will go over the, uh, the public internet. And then it will go and reach. Again, it's a reversal. It will reach the service network layer. And then to your internet layer and then to your transport layer and then your application uh, actual tomcat or your um, jboss whatever that is running in your server right it will reach there which will which way it will get processed and then while it is going to send a response back saying that your login is successful this is your html page it will again go through your application layer your transport layer internet layer so every time a request is sent from a client to a server or a client to a client Two missions, think about two missions, right? It will always go through one, two, three, four, right? So this one, two, three, four is nothing but your application can be in, it can be HTTP protocol or HTTPS, FTP or SSH, whatever it is. The, it's, a, it's a high level protocol through which a browser will communicate with your server. This HTTP and HTTPS, then it will get broken down or it will go go through these transport protocol, right? Transport um, uh, protocol like TCP and UDP, right? Um, these are all, what happens is, say if it is a 10 MB request, that will get split into a small, small packets, right? And this packet is what it will go through your TCP or I'll explain what is TCP, what is UDP. Um, so these are all, uh, the second level of uh, protocol, uh, uh, your your transport level protocol, and um, uh, the way in any system, if you take any system, you take your uh, Linux or a Windows, uh, any web application, that's how it is, it is going to work. You will have HTTP, HTTPS protocol, then it will get boiled down to a UDP, TCP, uh, where the entire request, right, 1 MB or 2 MB, it will be divided into a multiple smaller smaller packets and then it will send to the server right your http will boil down to your um, udp or tcp your entire request body will get chunked into smaller packets before it gets transmitted to your other internet and network access component and then to your server right so what i will do is for you to visualize this right um i'll probably open the wireshark before going to the Wireshark, right? Um, again, uh, this TCP and UDP, um, it is uh, either of one, it, it is not both, right? Um, most of your uh, 
uh, most of your web application and whatever you see it will be uh, through tcp not udp right um, there are reasons begin why they be, why they prefer tcp and why they don't prefer udp if you see this diagram right um, in a tcp protocol in a transmission control protocol um, your browser or your client in the client in sense your laptop right uh, when you hit at amazon.com first thing is it won't send the request directly okay it will through a tcp connection it will make a connection it will send a um, uh, note to a server saying that i'm trying to connect okay and then your server saying that okay i'm fine it will acknowledge it and then again client will say that okay i got your acknowledgement let's now proceed with the uh, communication so this handshake happens in only in tcp a transmission control protocol we, uh, uh, make sure that your client or server handshake is done uh, it will make sure that yes client can communicate with the server which means now when it is going to send the actual request it, uh, it will be uh, it will be under percentage it will be sent to a server that kind of a confidence tcp protocol will give you give you for the application whereas for the uh, your udp um it is not the case right um it is like once the it will establish a connection and it will wait it don't wait for the acknowledgement at all it will keep on pouring it uh request response request response either, either request is received or the response is received it is not going to worry it will keep on sending the response instantly okay but it is not that udp are um not a, a foolproof or you will lose data no it is it is also, also taken care but there's no guarantee since there is no guarantee uh, all your web applications will go through tcp okay and um, few of your video streamings uh, the, the use cases for udp are um uh, your uh, video streamings right um apart from video streaming i don't know uh, what would be the other use cases but uh, apart from that everything if you take any website it is going to go through the tcp because it guarantees you the handshake is done properly only then the actual request gets sent to your server so that kind of a confidence your tcp gives right and that's the reason we call it as a tcp ip model itself tcp is nothing but a transport a transport layer in, internet is your ip right so uh, the the reason they name it as tcp ip is majority of the places they are going to use the tcp uh, as the transport layer protocol right so uh, uh, the reason why you are, we are learning this is when you go to tools like um, wireshark or when you go and use any other tool you will see a lot of traffic right as, as see security testing is all about you go to um, put a um, hackers um, hat and you're going to look into the you're going to intercept the request and the response and when you do it through wireshark kind of a tool you will see a lot of these things a lot of http calls https calls udp tcp all these things will go and come so you should know what is that and what 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 happens in a typical application uh, navigation right so you have application transport internet network access that's how your request flows through all happens in a microseconds right you will not even know what happens when you as a uh, end user when you're accessing it in a chrome browser you will not even know but that's what happens at the behind the scene okay what we'll do is we'll go and then look into this something visually okay let me open the wireshark see wireshark again uh, you can download it very simple way downloading and installing is uh, very very easy uh, i will what i'll do is i'll um, i don't want to go and do this installation directly there were few people who have requested for um, explaining the installation also uh, what i'll do is i'll maybe sometime tomorrow or later i'll record that and i'll share the recorded video so that we don't need to spend time on installation sometimes it takes time right but it's very straightforward trust me and uh, i have if you want it if you don't want to download it from the internet i have already added these um 
into my drive uh, uh, so um, yeah go ahead go ahead yeah <clears throat> sorry to interrupt uh, so can you go back to the diagram with the differences between tcp and udp once again, let me finish this one and I'll, I'll go back definitely. So if you want to download it from uh, the drive, uh, all the tools are going to be here. You can download and then you can use it. The installation alone, uh, it is very straightforward to do it. If not, I'll share the video which you can follow and do it. Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, not this one, the third one, the, the third slide, fifth one, fifth one. Okay, okay. Next. Oh, next one, is it? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oops. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so here, uh, I mean, uh, the TCP, what you have been uh, told, like, I mean, we will go through uh, to one on one application, right? For example, in the Amazon or Flipkart, anything, whatever the web browser you are using, when we hit any uh, thing and whatever the say, results we are seeing, that uh, that comes under TCP, if I'm not wrong. Correct, 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 correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the response what we are I mean what we are sending to the uh, uh, I mean from the client to the server what we are sending the action performance is happening in the between so returning back to us it is uh, comes under TCP so then what I mean you for the UDP so do we have any uh, thing like that I mean any uh, uh, I mean here it uh, mentioned like one to all or multi right so we need a specific example for that I mean in which way we can uh, uh, know that uh, it will be under comes under UDP, likewise uh, TCP. Uh, your question is how to identify whether the application is uh, using TCP or UDP, is it? Yes, yes. How can we identify that? I mean, as uh, TCP is clear to us, but what about the UDP? How can we uh, clearly identify that it comes under the UDP? Okay. See, one way, definitely, that's uh, one way you can identify is uh, by looking into the traffic right um, as you said you will not know what is the kind of implementation the team has done right uh, either tcp yes. or udp so yes. when you when you hook into the traffic see there are two ways of looking into the traffic one uh, let me open a new tab and then go it uh, let me open say demo testify.net okay and then I'll go this and then find out. Okay. I'll ping the server and then get the IP address. Okay. And then I'll open the uh, Wireshark. So you can use Wireshark is the one of the famous um, uh, network analyzer tool. You might also Fiddler is there, but Fiddler will not give these kind of detailed information at the TCP IP level. So there might be other open source tools, but this is also an open source anyway. Okay. Once you open the Wireshark and then pick your network. Okay. So you're going to get a chunk of this data. Right. Uh, let it be there. Yeah. And then now what I'll do is it is going to capture everything in your system because it is not only your browser. You might have something running in your background, your, your teams, your outlook, uh, WhatsApp, whatever it is. Right. So uh, I'll just go this and then go to sign in. And then do a sign in. So all these things are getting recorded along with your other traffic, other activity that is happening in the system. Oh, okay. It's now. Uh, I mean, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Now, what I you mean, do is, uh, what, uh, whatever the things uh, in the laptop, whatever the applications we are running, it also will be tracked with the yes, uh, help of the. Okay. Okay. Correct. 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 So, and then, um, anyway, it is uh, there. It is. It is. Uh, it is in my original flow as well. So, I'll just go continuous. So, what you will do is, um, just go. If you see this traffic, you see your source, you see your destination, you see a protocol. Right? Protocol is nothing but it will have HTTP, it will have UDP, it will have TCP, TLS, all these things. Right? Now, what I'll do is I'll just go, uh, I'll stop it. 
because I already navigated, so I'll, try, I'll stop it. Then I'll right click it and then apply a filter. What I'm doing is uh, I'm, I'm going to apply a filter as a um, destination as my filter because I know the destination, right? Destination for me is demo testify.net, which is nothing but a um, when I ping demo .testify.net, this is my IP address, right? To know the destination IP address, you can ping uh, the domain name and then you can get the IP address, okay? And go here and then right click, apply as a filter, and then select it. Okay, now if you see, did I select a proper? Uh, Satish, no, uh, I, sorry, sorry. I think I, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't change it, right? Yeah, I'll copy this. No, Satish, sorry to interrupt you. What exactly we are trying to achieve here while searching this uh, IP yeah, address right. and using Sharp? Yes, yes. You are saying like we can do it, but uh, we're not. Um, I didn't understand like exactly what we're trying to achieve. It. What is our goal? Okay. See, our goal is now. There is. We are trying. We are. Uh, we are trying. We are under. Uh, we are learning the concepts. Okay. We are learning the concepts about TCP/IP model. Okay. And then uh, in the TCP/IP model, I was talking about the HTTP layer, transport layer. Right. I, I, what I said is when you do something, when I, when I, you do something in your browser, what I told is the request is your HTTP request, right? So when if you open the developer tool, when I hit this request, you get this main.jsp and then it is your HTTP call, right? Or HTTPS call. This is the first level of mm -hmm. um, yes. uh, uh, request that goes out from your browser, right? And then mm -hmm. second is your TCP or UDP. So for you to understand, see, we'll use Wireshark definitely for many things later, but for you to understand this concept about TCP IP model, I open the Wireshark and we will trace this request, right? We, uh, I have placed a request in the browser. The request HTTPS request has been sent out from the browser. And then I open the um, uh, Wireshark and then uh, I just recorded all my Wi-Fi traffic here. Now the, it has, hundreds of uh, requests right i don't want all the requests i cannot be able to go and spot it so i'm just filtering it the destination i know the destination my destination is uh, demo.testify.net which is nothing but 65.61 okay so this uh, is your yeah. ip address right no what you've done in the command prompt is your ip address right no 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 here i am pinging the demo.testify.net it is a destination my ip so address you... if i want to know Mm, no, mm, no, where mm. did you got that ping uh, demo.testify.net? It is from the request, right? So, no, no, this is here. Yeah, this is the application which I have launched, right? Okay. This is the domain. Uh, See, if it is Amazon.com. Okay, you are pinging that one itself. Demo.testify.net. Yes, yes. Got it. Yeah, if it is a, a, a Flipkart, I'll go and say Flipkart.com. It will give me the Flipkart IP. Okay, and with that, I can go and uh, I go to the filter. Uh, I ju you just pick anything. You just pick anything. Uh, if you go, if you delete this, right? Um, it will have everything. Just pick any randomly anything, and then right click it, and then apply as a filter. Select it, and then go and change this to your IP address. Okay. Now, if you see, go to the top. Okay. If you go to the top, there is going to be a TCP connections, okay. And if you see here, there are going to be acknowledgement, sequence, acknowledgement, sequence, acknowledgement, sequence, acknowledgement. The way it will work is you don't need to go and actually uh, drill down these acknowledgement, but for your understanding, right? The way it works is uh, your, yeah. So here, if you see, First, uh, when a, a client is communicating with the server, it will send a code, a secret code, 4321. Your server will say that, okay, I received this 4321. My acknowledgement number is 4321 plus one, right? So that is this this number, because at, a, at, a, at, a, at a any point of time, your client will make many connection with many servers, right? So this is more of an identifier. So uh, a client will say that, okay, I'm, I'm sending a passcode, a password to you, 4321. Server, it will say that, yes, I'm okay, saying, uh, sending acknowledgement, 
and then it will also send another sequence number called 5501 and then now uh, your client will say that okay i received your acknowledgement and i'm sending you back the acknowledgement for the acknowledgement ack equal to 5502 so it's a three way and shake to ensure that a proper stable communication is established that's why you see it in here here there will be an acknowledgement and then acknowledgement there will be acknowledgement so again you know it there will be something going on randomly but that's how the flow works there will be acknowledgement there will be a sequence number through which these connection will be established if you come down slowly there are tcp 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 and you will see a tls uh, since it, this site is an https you are seeing that i'll come back to all this ssl TLS, uh, tls later you see a tls and if you come down come down come down tls tcp so you don't see any udp right so if it is a uh, uh, udp based application you will see a protocol as udp that's one way you can identify um any coming uh, back that's what, mm -hmm. yeah that's mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what sadish i asked a uh, specific scenario like uh, for the udp um, as you mentioned like we can track through this application workshop so now if you, whatever you are showing in the tool which for wireshark i mean we are uh, seeing only tcp right so now i mean uh, the difference between the tcp and udp the one to one connection will be tcp the udp what way we are uh, can be configured it will be seen on the wireshark right yes 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 uh, wireshark will, will will capture both uh, tcp and udp okay now in this uh, mm. Mm. Yeah, in this uh, now, no, not this one. The slide which you shown, right? That acknowledgement and synchronization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on that, you mentioned like whatever the uh, codes we are sending. So for example, on the password, something it will be around like uh, uh, so numbers only we will be sending, or else how it will be sending any uh, uh, specific characters or anything it will be sent, or else only uh, it will be in uh, any uh, alpha numeric uh, numeric value. Uh, it will be in numeric is my understanding because it is always going to be it will increment one and then send it back. um uh, there are there are two ways of looking into it one um yes this these things happens in between uh but how, ex how exactly it happens and we will not track it uh, even from security testing perspective we will not go and check what sequence has been sent and what is getting incremented what is the client number but it is more of a concept uh, right but uh, to my knowledge it is a, a pure number numerical value Yeah. Okay. Numerical value. So for now, uh, can you go back to the device short one? Mm -hmm. yeah. So here, uh, if you see that the TCP has value uh, somewhat around we saw right acknowledgement and uh, some S Y number. So, so mm -hmm. for some things, it was shown like all the same numbers, whether it is not incremented over there, right? Uh, so then, how it will be? We can say that it will come under the incremental way when we send any uh, specific numbers or anything. it will comes under the numeric uh, with an incremental number for example you i mean uh, as you mentioned like 4321 so we are sending back and it is giving us a acknowledgement number with the 4322 so and we are, after that we are sending to back to at last we will get the some number like 5502 to something so at the time right so the same thing we are seeing in the tcp uh, in the application we are seeing all the same numbers right so how it is getting incremented over here see uh, if you go to that level definitely i don't have an answer um we we don't look into those acknowledgement number sequence number right there's no need for that if you are pure network engineers right to understand the packet losses um those thing we need uh, to go to that level for sure uh, even i haven't gone into that level of network engineering uh, but the concept wise that is what happens between uh, your client and server and that is why people prefer tcp because it ensures that um, connectivity uh, between two parties oh okay okay for sure it will happen but uh, we can't yes, yes, sure yes. right? okay it will no 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 it will definitely sometimes it what will happen is it will be it will be tough jump uh, things like get get uh, jumbled here um, or it might do a reconnect uh, so we will not get an uh, actual explanation of why certain acronym numbers are repeated but definitely it will tcp by concept See, so TCP is not implemented by your application. Okay, TCP is uh, implemented by the your machine, your OS, um, right? So your network layer. So it is not application specific. TCP 
implementation will work at at your browser level at your system level it is not application specific so we don't need to uh, test it or we don't need to worry about it it will happen but conceptually that's how that's how it works okay so now uh, when we hit an a browser like flipkart okay so it is an tcp connection because we are getting the one to one server one to one response so it comes Correct. under tcp Correct. Yes, yeah, it comes under TCP. For example, so on the TCP, we are getting some value like uh, one two three four. Okay, acknowledgement number like one two three four. So for example, today we hit that browser and we uh, got a response like one two three four. So tomorrow at the same time we are getting the same browser. So at that time it got some uh, uh, flip card is down or something is down. So at that time we will get any response for that or else it will be same acknowledgement will be displayed over here. No, no, no. It, everything will get closed. See, your TCP connection will get closed the moment uh, you your job is done. It will it will get get closed immediately within a, a few seconds or within uh, a minute. The connection will get closed again. If you go and refresh it, you will uh, you will establish a new connection. So it won't uh, even wait for a day and all. It will be just few seconds. The connection will get clo closed. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So Satish, uh, so after knowing the TCP and UDP protocol, so how it will, uh, how can we use that for testing purpose? Security. I don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll not say we'll we'll not go there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, um, knowing TCP and UDP, with that, what we are going to do for a test uh, for your security testing, there is no direct connection for that. But these things we need to know before we go on to a testing, right? Um, okay. These are basics uh, uh, about. Um, uh, security because we are going to intercept the traffic and we're going to see a lot of these things when we do a uh, testing so these are the terminologies these are the concepts uh, with, with this what we are going to do maybe you will understand while we go and do those testing but it's not directly uh, relevant directly it is relevant but it is not directly connected with, with the testing okay got it yeah see I'll, t I'll tell you one more thing maybe in another five ten minutes you'll also understand a little bit more um, so now with this, uh, see, first level is uh, HTTP and second is UC, UDP and TCP, I said, right? We saw UDP and TCP. Now going back to the application level, you have HTTP and HTTPS. And most of you know what is HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, HTTP is uh, just a, uh, uh, your, uh, your um, uh, unsecured way of connecting uh, from your browser to a server, whereas HTTPS is a more secured way of uh, communicating, right? The more Every website so that you, all, all the, um, uh, banking or insurance, all the commercial sites are going to be through HTTPS, right? That's a very minimal basic requirement. And uh, there are many other sites which is not uh, something uh, uh, we use day in, day out. That might be still in HTTP because uh, they don't want to go and purchase a certificate. It's not that important. They will still be in HTTP. Okay, so um, yeah, basic. That's a basic difference between HTTP and HTTPS, right? HTTP is a more secure way of doing it. Whatever you're going to send it from your browser to your server, the data will be encrypted. I was telling you yesterday, uh, Monday, right? Uh, see, the the one of the main objective is to uh, safeguard your data and its privacy and its integrity. Data while in transition, data while it is stored. Right, so data in transition is nothing but when the data is going to get transmitted from your browser to your server. You provide your user ID and pro you provide your net banking user ID and password. Right, you provide your OTP. And why do you provide us in the browser? I mean, now I mean, uh, why you are very very confident that uh, nothing will happen because we know that it is a uh, trusted site. It is, it is an HTTPS uh, net banking dot icc bank dot com or scfc dot com. The data over the transit. It will be encrypted. It will be uh, you won't be able to. Uh, nobody will be able to understand what is the ICD or password, right? It will be encrypted. So that is why what that is the um, importance of HTTPS. Whereas in HTTP, you will never go and get the data uh, encrypted. It will be sent as a plain text. If you enter admin admin, it will be sent as an admin admin only, right? So we'll take an example again. Okay, um, let let's open two websites. Okay, this is website number one and if I go and look into the network call um, we did just did that um, uh, this uh, login right let me go and open the let me do one more thing or I'll do a sign off okay let me do a sign off and then 
do a sign and then do a i'm giving an admin and then i'm giving an admin okay now if you go to do login payload it says that uid is admin password is admin okay i'm seeing this data this is at the browser level right uh, this is not uh, at the uh, what is sent over the network it is at the browser level it is admin admin okay now i go back to the um my wireshark okay and then I'll, what i'll do is i'll again uh, sorry i'll start capturing the data again continue without saving yeah and then i need to do redo this again i'll do a sign off i'll do a sign in admin admin okay now i'll stop this and then i'll just add this as a filter i'll go and take the at this okay now see uh, the protocol what you will see is tls okay um see yes, uh, we call it as we are still calling it as an ssl um because when it started uh, several years back it, it was called as an ssl certificate right um we had multiple version over the time uh in fact if you see this uh, uh, history, we add SSL 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. Every version, as every version of any software, right? There's going to be improvement. In this case, with every version, there is an improvement in the way the security is going to work, right? With with advanced version, it is more uh, uh, gives no more, more protection to your data. Uh, uh, so the the power of uh, encryption is very very high. So TLS from SSL. Uh, it is completely moved to uh, TLS, TLS 1.1. The reason is SSL, till SSL 3.0, uh, it had a lot of security vulnerabilities. Okay, so when so that is why people started losing the trust. So instead of naming it as 4.0 or 5.0, they completely moved to uh, uh, TLS. Okay, so it is called as TLS 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, and it is. Uh, uh, 1.3 as well uh, now recently okay so but still uh, the whole world we call it as an when you say https we say that ssl i need as ssl certificate right but it is actually a tls okay that is why you see here it is a tls b 1.2 so this site is still using not 1.3 it is using 1.2 but uh, even 1.2 is also something still uh, in market it is not uh, out of uh, warranty or it is expired it is still been used by many of the application though 1.3 is advanced 1.2 is, is still used that is why you see we, we talk about https and we always call it as an ssl right ssl certificate or ssl um, protocol but uh, it is tls so you can use either of the word actual thing is it is tls um, okay so that's why you see tls now if you see here there are tcp connections tls application data so what you need to check in though you see admin admin in your developer tool but when you go back in the um, other network level right you are capturing this data at the network level so it is a transit you can think that the data is a transit is what we are capturing here now if you go and look into the up so there will be multiple application data okay application data application data you pick any of the application data maybe at the last application data you can pick it okay and then if you expand it click this you expand it and see if you see any kind of uh, meaningful data is there or not right click it go to follow and follow the tcp stream okay see whether you could able to understand anything all the data is encrypted it you don't it's all 
it's all hexadecimals you don't see anything that uh, you can interpret uh, understand or interpret so that is why we call it as a uh, we call when the data is getting transmitted as an admin admin uh, uh, from your browser but when it is actually transmitting um, uh, through a network it is going to be encrypted now let's take another example i'll take the isha uh, it's a training website okay it's a it's not a, a commercial website it is meant for a training that's why it says not secure if you go here okay see a couple of sites if you go right I'll, let me go to flipkart sorry immediately when you type it it will say um connection is secure okay and it will say that it is going to it is using um somewhere it will say the value as well uh, where it is certificate key um public key so this is the algorithm um it's not giving the exact tls version here but you will find the tls version as well in some of the application so it is saying that it is a secured right um when you click here you see it is a connection is secure whereas here it says insecure your connection to the head is not secure right so now let me let me log in okay let me try to capture the this again okay i'll go here continue without saving i'll take out this filter now i'll go and do this sign in okay and then i'll say i'll give this and then validate now let me go and ping the um this okay this is 95 dot triple one dot for this now let's go and so at the um, uh, protocol or uh, the HTTP protocol level uh, from a developer tool, definitely you would have seen this uh, uh, whatever user ID password we are given, right? It would have captured in the developer tool. Obviously, like uh, in demo test fire, here as well you would have got the ID and password. Now let's go to the um, destination filter and then say selected and then I'll go and add the this destination. Okay, think that, think that this is a, um, this wire shark, right? Think as a person who is trying to hook into your network, trying to see what you're doing. Okay, say you might be using your uh, mobile in a public place, maybe in an airport or in a, in a mall. So in certain places, they give you a free Wi-Fi, right? And uh, few people uh, tend to use those Wi-Fi and uh, so which means it's a common network uh, wi-fi administrator will be able to um, open the wireshark and then he'll be able to uh, uh, capture all the traffic that is going through his router right so when he is going to do that and then um, say you're typing this uh, isha training solution dot com and you're entering your user ID and password right so if you see here again this destination there's a tcp 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 there's a http it's not tls it's an http okay if you see this http if you go here right what it says it's a post oauth token password username is isha training solution password is isha training solution right which means um your user and password somebody wanted to um uh, do an uh, uh, intercept your traffic even earlier they can intercept the traffic for the demo test fire also but there they will not be able to get any data they will know that somebody is trying to connect from this source to destination something is going on what is going on what, what the data transit nobody will be able to capture but here uh, the people will be able to whoever is trying to hack will be able to capture this data so your data is there with the some other third, third person right so that is what it will happen with your http protocol people will be able to uh, intercept your data will be able to 
capture all the all of the all the uh, traffic if you go to this follow and then follow the http stream right all the communication entire communication right your validation question what is your country uh, uh, answer is india so all the request and response it is all in a plain text right sorry. your access token yeah yeah sorry to interrupt you so uh, as is we can be captured when the uh, connection is not secured right correct correct okay when it will be secured it will be comes under the tls some uh, tls version yes. will be shown that we yes. only yes. capture but it will shown in the some uh, uh, encrypted form when we uh, see that some is uh, follow and Correct. see we, uh, some right so, at the, uh, so this is the way of difference between the uh, connection and uh, non connection uh, connection secured and connection not secured right secured connection and unsecured connection Correct. So this way, yeah, I yeah. mean, we can find out uh, all the things through Wireshark tool. Yeah, Wireshark is a network analyzer tool. Uh, you would be able to uh, capture these, uh, intercept this traffic, and understand what is going on. See, uh, it is majorly it is it is for your uh, network engineers, but even for the performance testers, even for the security testers. This is help to understand the way the traffics are um, transferred from your client to browser. So we'll this will aid us. This is not a main tool, but this will aid us. If you're going to use uh -huh. a tool like uh, Burp Suit um, or your uh, uh, apps, HCL app scans, there also you'll be able to look into the traffic. You will be able to intercept the traffic. But uh, uh, even without even that, to analyze your uh, HTTP traffic, you will be you can use the tool like Wireshark. It's a network analysis tool. It's a very good tool. Okay, sure, understood. Yeah, uh, but Satish, um, uh, one more question to it. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, can't go ahead. we get this data from the uh, console itself, network, network and console? In in your uh, developer tool, uh, where, where do you yeah. see? It? If you go to network and. Uh, mm -hmm. All data. Go to all. Where is it? All. Okay. Yeah. Maybe here, if you if you get the response right, if mm -hmm. you reload response, if you click on that, any of the response, if you click on it, right? Yeah. Here you'll get like what is okay. Yeah. Here a preview response initiator timing. Cookies. Mm, 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 mm. You'll get, you'll oh. get. Yes. Yeah, can't we trace from here, like, okay, what exactly it's been sent and what response we have got? No, 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 no. The difference is, see, even here, if you see, um, it, the whatever data you see, right, um, is at the only at the HTTP level. It, uh, the Wireshark gives a one more level down at the TCP level, okay. And okay. why we are why we are seeing there is to to uh, understand uh, as a uh, there's something called um, uh, man in the middle attack. Okay, the way it, the man in the middle attack works is you have a user, you have a application. This Wireshark is kind of a man in the middle. Okay, uh, what we are trying to understand is if somebody is trying to hook, whether you will be able to see the data or the browser is is still inside right the developer tool will show you admin admin or whatever user user password you enter it will show us a plain text only because it is at the, it's at the uh, chrome chrome browser level but only wireshark it will act as a man in the middle uh, so okay. that's the difference uh, right to, to understand this concept i'm opening the uh, wireshark but if you, if your interest is only to look at the request and response and all the headers and the cookies yes you can look into the developer tool as well, itself our idea, our intention here is to understand uh, uh, with the concept of HTTP and HTTPS to know whether the data is encrypted or not. Uh, whether encrypted or not, you will only be able to see it in the developer tool. That you will be able to see it in the, the tool like uh, Wireshark. Okay. See, majorly why we use Wireshark is for uh, to see okay if it is a TCP or if it is a secured protocol, uh, the response and uh, request and response are coming in a secured way right or any yeah. uh, leakages in the uh, in the middle 
right to ensure that it's all set secure and uh, going through right uh, correct see there are many use cases for wireshark uh, as a uh, for a network yeah, engineer or a, currently or a yeah, but for our what scope, we are, correct yeah today correct. what we are, we are is, correct yeah, what we observe today is for this only to identify whether it's a tcp or udp or uh, it's an http as or STP, http whether every connection is secured or it's coming in a node uh, package, right? Correct, correct, correct. You're right. Okay. To understand this, see, uh, just to, to go over and then I, if I go to talk about that theoretically, right, you will not be able to visualize it. If I just say about TCP UDP, if I just say HTTP, right, I mean, this will not stick in your mind. So if you go and relate that practically and see what is happening in the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the tool like Wireshark, you'll be able to relate and then you will not forget. Cool. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay, I'll take a pass here, guys. I think uh, uh, it's already 10. I'll take a pass. Um, any other uh, people, uh, folks on the call, uh, any other questions? Uh, so, uh, Sadish, uh, the notes which we discussed, uh, it can be shared to us, right? Uh, the slides, what you are uh, seeing here? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> See, the slides are proprietary to Isha, right? Uh, okay. The content, the main, see if there are any uh, very specific things that you need, um, that I can probably put it in a document and send it. Otherwise, yeah. indirectly, you will get the recording and you can easily screen oh, grab okay. it, right? When, in, indirectly, you're anyway going to get it. But just that, uh, since it's an Asia's proprietary, I cannot share the slide uh, to you guys, but you will have the content as a video anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Okay. Like what are the tool we will cover for vulnerability assessment, like uh, like Spotify or something? No, we'll be using the Burp suit. Uh, see, um, I would use the Burp suit professional because I have both edition. Uh, but uh, Burp suit professional is a commercial version. Uh, so for your practice, you can use community. Um, but both as Certain things good to have features in professional. I was telling you the other day, right? I'll, I'll tell you what is the difference. But Burp Suit is a one which we'll be using it uh, in the uh, our session. But again, when law in if you go to any project, you might have uh, Fortify, you might have AppScan, you might have uh, uh, Acuantix. There are many tools in the market. So concepts are important, and we are going to use one of the I would say top top two, top three uh, tool, Burp Suit is a, will be there in top three definitely. So we will use a Burp Suit. And same thing, you can extend it for any tool. It's it's like you jumping between UFT to Selenium or Load Runner, JMeter. It's, it's a it's, uh, tool does not going to make a lot of difference. So we'll use Burp Suit. Thanks. Okay, uh, so good that I think there are a couple of people who uh, uh, we, we had a discussion yesterday offline. Uh, so if you guys have any questions uh, to understand how it is going to be useful, relevant, right? Please uh, message me. We can uh, connect uh, tomorrow based on our mutual availability. Um, okay, um, yeah, guys. So if you have any questions on the um, uh, registration or uh, uh, payment, reach out to admins of this WhatsApp group or reach out to Kumar sir you'll be able to help it out guys okay yeah we'll meet on friday before that if you have any questions or discussion needed please uh, don't hesitate to message me we can connect tomorrow sure sure yeah thank you guys i'll stop the recording we'll meet on friday yeah thank sure, you